And this was so shocking. It only works on iPhone 14 Pro variants. Okay, Apple recently announced the latest iOS 17. You get some crazy features like standby mode, contact poster, live stickers, etc, etc. And then there's a 2 lakh Mac Studio, 4 lakh Mac Studio, 7 lakh MacBook Pro and 3 lakh Apple Vision Pro. How many kidneys do you have? Two. So both of us have to sell our kidneys. <laughs> But there are a lot of things Apple kind of missed, either by mistake or intentionally. And as an Android fanboy, I have few things to say. So here are 7 new features in iOS 17. Now before we get to the feature, iOS 17 developer beta is released for all the iPhones up until iPhone XS. A phone that launched 5 years back in 2018. And you need to have a developer ID to try iOS 17. It is not available for all. And of course, not all features will work on all iPhones. So we'll get to that. Let's go. So now starting iOS 17, you can set up your photo or Memoji as a contact card. This is called a contact poster. And this is basically how your call screen would look when you call someone else. You can decide the background color. You can even add filters to your contact photos. That's like really good. One UI supremacy. No, it works slightly different than Samsung One UI. Here you can decide your own contact photo and it will show the same photo to everyone who has saved your contacts on other devices. It's different. So it's different. Like, suppose I set this photo as my contact card and now when I call Mrinal here, it shows my photo automatically with the font style and everything and I haven't put any settings on Mrinal's phone. Now, of course, if some of your friend decide to play up a prank and puts up a meme as his contact poster, it will show up that way on your phone and all your contacts phone wherever your number is saved. But you also have the option to put custom photo for your contacts. But it would still be funny to see this contact poster franks on April Fool's Day. Like, that would be the new trend. Now, the second feature was really cool. Remember long back, iOS had this feature where you can lift any subject from the background and instantly use the subject and send it on WhatsApp, anywhere. But now, Apple takes it one step further. And this is so neatly integrated. You can now pick up someone from the photo and use the photo as a sticker to react to a message. And this one's good. You can also use live photos as a live sticker or GIF to react to a message. And as of now, you can only use these in iMessage. But in future, it will also work with Instagram and WhatsApp. And by the way, these stickers are synced to iCloud. So you can use it on your iPad, Mac OS, or wherever you use stickers on iOS. Now, iOS 17 has also this feature where you can use reactions in live FaceTime. They kind of stick to you like AR, but that's just okay. Just curious to know in India, how many of you guys use FaceTime? Now, the best feature is you can do live reactions in a video call and it's fun. Like if I make this heart, see heart comes out. And if I do a single thumbs up, there's this like. And if I do double thumbs up, whoa, you have this fireworks. I mean, if I do this to someone using Android, he'll have no clue how to do it. And the best part is reaction works on third party apps like WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. Like literally hearing this, my Pixel phone dropped. <laughs> And this one is really good, but the sad thing is this will only work on iPhone 12 and above. So 10s, 10r, bye bye. Also, there are a bunch of privacy features in Safari, where now if you open private mode, it is by default locked by Face ID. So whatever you are watching in private mode will be locked if someone else opens Safari. And also Safari private mode will disable all trackers, which is nice because if you're searching for some medications in private mode, things should stay private. And these features already exist in Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, but I think it's a much needed privacy update for everyone. And this next feature is really, really good. Now, whenever you keep your iPhone on charging like this in landscape, the phone enters standby mode. And this looks like a proper desk clock. You can customize the look and have temperature. You can have your to-do list, your photos. You can even change the clock styles and everything. And this one, this one's crazy. Alexa, turn off studio lights. See, it turns red. And now Alexa, turn on studio lights. It gets white. So it understands ambient light. And this standby feature also works if you're charging your phone via MagSafe. However, if you have anything below Android 14 Pro, the standby will turn off after 20 seconds. You have to tap to turn it on. This was very shocking to know. Like, 
Why? What's even the point? Now, the next feature is classic Apple. It's such a small feature, but the usability is very, very good. So basically, you can take two iPhones and just bring it close to each other to share your contact number, email address, etc, etc. And not just that, you can also share images, videos by bringing an iPhone closer to another iPhone. Now, as of now, this feature is not working on our devices. So we'll have to wait and see whether it uses NFC or something else. And finally, I really love this feature. Now, when you go to iMessage, you have the option to share location and all. But now when you swipe up on the same menu, there is this check-in option. So suppose I want to reach a location, I can add that to check-in. In the beta version, at the moment, it is not working. And there is also an option to put up a timer. So suppose I put up a timer of three hours. So after three hours, my iPhone will prompt me and I have to respond to the prompt. If I don't respond to the prompt in 15 minutes, it will inform the emergency services as well as my friend about my location, phone battery level, cell status, everything. That's like a very, very good feature and it's literally your phone taking care of you. I remember my friend's family send me live location on WhatsApp when they take an auto at night. I hope the check-in feature comes to Android as well. Now, apart from these features, there are also few features like live voicemail transcript that is only available in English and won't work with Hindi. And features like the new journal app or airdrop continuity over internet, Apple Music playlist collaboration, those all will come later this year. Also, you finally get predictive text. So if you're typing, it predicts the word or even the entire sentence. But predictive text is only available on iPhone 12 and later. Also, now you can say Siri instead of Hey Siri, but that feature is probably not arriving in India. It is only Australia, Canada, Great Britain, US only. Now, this year was very interesting. Google announced Android 14 and it was very heavy on AI features, whereas iOS 17 was very heavy on customization. There was one strong word from Apple, customizations for you. Your phone behaves according to you, which seems very anti-Apple. Exactly, Apple. But it's good to see iOS getting good features like the standby, contact poster, etc, etc. These things exist on Android, but when Apple implements it, you know, they make it so customer focused and practical. Now, whatever I feel about Apple as a company, but I was truly impressed with the Apple Vision Pro. And there's a very wonderful approach from Apple. They took everything with the glasses to the next level. 4K OLED screen, micro OLED, eye tracking, all the next level things and even the price to the next level, 3 lakh rupees, but zero compromises. On the other hand, there is Facebook or Meta selling VR for about 35,000 rupees with lots of compromises on hardware. Now, both are very different approach. It would be interesting to see how these VR or AR glasses will end up three years from now, but yeah, we have a new platform. On that note, this is Radhik signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew, pew.